Hello. Here we go for the next instalment of The Girl Who Stole an Elephant by Nizrana Farouk. Um, so, last night we left them. They were being chased by the King's Guards, weren't they, on the horses. They went further into the jungle. And as they got into the jungle, oh my goodness, they got lost themselves, didn't they? Ooh. Let's pick it up for chapter 21 and 22 and we'll see how we're doing. Let's get out of here, said Chaya. Neil looked up to get his bearings, but the leaves above them were spread thickly and the gnarled trunks of the of the trees scuffled with each other for room in the damp, knee-high undergrowth. The smell of decaying leaves filled the air. What a nice description. Wouldn't it be safer to stay up here for a while, said Nawa, coming up behind them. Not that I like it here. It gives me the shivers, but until we're sure they're gone. No, said Neil, we have to leave. Chaya followed Nawa and Neil as they squished past a trunk furred with caterpillars towards sparser forest. Nawa yelped and jerked to a stop, making Chaya bump into her. From the edge of a brook up ahead, a leopard stared at them, disturbed whilst lapping water. Chaya clamped her hand over Nawa's mouth. She held on tightly as Nawa struggled to run. Neil held up his hand. Keep still. Don't startle it. The leopard stared keenly at them, its rusty yellow spotted body reflected in the water. Chaya took a deep breath to calm herself. She needn't be afraid. Man-eaters were rare, despite what she had told Nara. Neil took gentle steps forward. He waved a finger over his shoulder for them to follow. Chaya let go of Nara and gave her a light prod. Nara moved forward, whimpering under her breath. Neil took a curving path, staying well out of the way of the leopard. It turned its head, watching their progress. Chaya took the shallowest of breaths, making herself as quiet as possible. As long as they didn't make any sudden movements, they'd be fine. Make yourself big, never cower down, father had said. Now I stepped on the hem of her skirt and stumbled to the ground. The leopard growled and stiffened. Now I scrabbled about and sprang up with a yowl. The leopard made a sudden leap. <laughs> now I screamed, but it had leapt away from them, springing up in the bank in one smooth bound and sprinting away into the trees. Now I burst into tears. I'm so quiet now, said Chaya. Let's get out of here first. They walked briskly on and in ten minutes they were out of the undergrowth and into a drier, less dense part of the forest. Chaya exhaled. You nearly got us killed there. Did you seriously think you could outrun a leopard? Go easy on her. She's not used to these things, said Neil. Now we're never out of danger here. All right, we have to stay calm. Nawa nodded, shamefaced and subdued. Chaya felt a telltale itch on her legs and lifted up the edge of her skirt. A few fat leeches were studded on her shins. Ugh, what's that? said Nawa. Chaya dropped her skirt hurriedly. Nothing, she said. Neil frowned at Chaya. She could see a few blots of blood around the bottom of his sarong. What are you two hiding from me? said Nawa. She lifted her skirt and at that moment a fat leech dropped down onto her foot. It's nothing, said Neil. They're just leeches. Nawa gave a blood-curdling scream <coughs> that disturbed the monkeys and set a flock of birds flying into the sky. She stamped her feet and scrabbled at her legs, but Neil pulled her hands off. Stop it! It'll only get infected if you pull it off. Are you mad? I need to get them off! Nawa tried to claw at her legs, but Neil held her arms. No, Nawa, their mouths will stay embedded in your skin if you do that. No. So what do I do? Nawa stamped and wailed like a demented person. They'll drop when they're full. Seriously, just give it a few minutes. Chaya sighed. She didn't want to tell Neil she told him so. We're okay here, she said to Nawa. It's only the dampest part of the jungle that have them. Nawa looked up at the sky and squeezed her eyes shut, tears seeping out of them as she wept silently. One by one, leeches started dropping from their legs. Nawa? Chaya kicked away the blood-gorged lumps of leeches that had fallen off the girl. You're okay. They're all gone now. Look, you're fine. Neil looked surprised at Chaya's softer tone. It was almost as if she was starting to feel sorry for Nawa. But now I pushed Chaya away and stalked ahead. She was properly sobbing now, walking blindly with tears streaming down her face. After a few minutes, she stopped and sat on a stone, sobbing down into her lap. So that's what you wanted salt for. I thought you wanted to cook. I hate this place. I really, really hate this place. This jungle, this country, everything. Why did I come? I just want to go home. Neil went and squatted down near her. 
You had no choice. It will be better when... I did have a choice, screamed Nala. I didn't want to have to come and you certainly didn't want me to, to. When the explosion came from the palace, all the monks rushed to see what was going on and I went with them. My father must be sick with worry and it's all my fault. Neil looked at Chaya with a frown. Chaya shrugged. She couldn't understand it either. But now, why did you want to come? Because I was a fool. I wanted to have what you two have. Now was almost hysterical, muddy streaks down her face and on her blouse. You're always doing things, important, interesting things. I don't have any friends, only my father and nanny and servants, nobody else, not a soul. So I made you think I had to come with you. She rocked back and forth, head in her hands. No wonder, no wonder now looked so guilty earlier. How incredibly stupid she'd been. This was a life or death situation and now had thrown herself into it because she didn't have friends to do things with. How lonely must you be to do something like that? This was some level of recklessness, even by Chaya's own standards. Now listen, Chaya bent down and offered her hand. We've got to go. Come on, we have to get moving. Now I chaired at Chaya's hand, then took it and got up unsteadily. We'll talk about this as we go along, okay? said Neil. We don't have any time to lose. Now I nodded shakily. She was still teary and hiccupy, but sniffled and walked along next to them. Yes, Neil's right. Chaya strode next to her. We'd better keep moving, because the king's going to send all his men into the jungle now that he knows exactly where we are. Chaya glanced at Nowra out of the corner of her eye as they walked. Apart from the occasional sniffle, she was quiet. Neil cleared his throat. <clears throat> we um, we should stop for soon for lunch, I guess. Anyone hungry? Silence from Nowra. I am, said Chaya. Wish there were more of your sweets, Nowra. They were so good. I agree, Neil nodded hard. Best sweets I've ever eaten. Nowra shuffled along, looking at no one. Neil caught Chaya's eye. She shrugged. Nowra would have to... Now I would come round when she was ready. How much off course do you think we are? Asked Neil. Asked, oh my goodness. Asked Chaya. Neil shrugged. Hopefully not much. If we keep heading south, we can still get to Gal just by a slightly longer route. Chaya's heart sank. Now the guards knew they were in the jungle, they wouldn't stop searching until they'd found them. They stopped near a river and sat down on some large rocks. Now I stay as far away from them on the bank as possible. Neil got into the river and walked ahead, trying to catch the darting fish with his bare hands. Chaya wandered over to Nawa to try to get a fire going with two rocks and a few sticks the way Neil had done. But five minutes later, she was still bashing them together, and even after smashing a bit of a thumb, she hadn't got so much as a spark. She turned to Nawa and wiped her hair away from her sweaty forehead. Do you know how to do this, Nawa? I wish I'd watched when Neil was doing it. Now I shook her head without looking at Chaya. Chaya threw the stones into the river where they bounced on a rock and splashed into the water. Do you think he's all right? asked Nara in a small voice. Who? Neil? Chaya turned to see him splashing about in the water. Not Neil Ann. The elephant. Oh! Chaya shrugged. The king's men would have taken him back home, which is the best thing for him, really, since, you know, he's been brought up in captivity. Nara nodded. Neil came clumbering up to them, carrying two glistening silver fish. Thought he may have a fire going by now. I, we tried, but it didn't work. Come on now, let's get Neil some sticks for the fire. Now I got up slowly and followed her. Chaya collected branches and laid them in a pile, and now I made trips back and forth, taking them to Neil. I think that's enough now. Chaya threw the last of the sticks into the pile. Now I gently poked some plants with her shoe. Have you seen this? The leaves fold up when you touch them. And they straighten out soon after. Chai came over to Nawa. They're called touch-me-nots. Not a big deal, they're just weeds. Strange. Now I touch different parts over and over, watching the leaves curl up, then straighten out again. The world is full of amazing things. Plants that can feel, elephants that can swim, squirrels that can fly. I wish I knew all this stuff. Yeah, you'll learn. I know. I've got so much to, I've got to know so much already. Now I looked up at Chaya. I was wondering. Could you teach me how to climb trees? Sure. Now I smiled. Thanks. I've just thought of what we can do if we see another leopard. We just climb a tree. Chaya sighed. Hey, Neil yelled. He had stuck the two fish on a stick and was holding it over a fire. Do I have to do everything around here? Chaya scrambled up and took over from Neil. He went off and sat in the shade, fashioning a sort of pitcher out of wood. It was scorching near the fire. Smoke curled around the fish and singed at Chaya's fingers. How long do you think I need to hold it like this? Now shrugs. Until it looks cooked? 
Chaya held it closer to the flames. Wait, I'm sure that should be enough now, said Nara. Yes, this should be okay. It looks nicely coloured. Coloured? Neil came over and slapped his forehead. Those look burnt. They probably taste good. Chaya put them on leaves and passed one to Neil. And that's all that matters. She broke off a piece and took a bite. Blech. Neil spat out his mouthful. Now put hers down without so much as a nibble. Honestly, it was a simple task. Neil rubbed the back of his hand with his tongue. Do I have to do everything around here? It's not a big deal. Chai got up and tosh, tossed the charred fish away. Let me find some fruit or something. People make mistakes, Neilan, said Nawa, shaking her head at a surprised Neil. She stood up and went with Chaya. I'll help you look, Chaya. Oh, Chaya was at a loss for words. Thank you. They went off to find some food together. They're making friends, aren't they? Oh. So, um, yeah, so they're on their way to Gal. The guards now know that they're in a jungle. I wouldn't, surely wouldn't the smoke rise up out of the trees and let them know where they are? Maybe, maybe the trees are so thick there that the smoke is not being seen by the guards. I don't know. And what happened to the elephant? Do you think it went back to the king? Was that the only time we're going to see an elephant? It is the title, The Girl Who Stole an Elephant. What? The Girl Who Stole an Elephant for three pages? Hmm. We'll have to find out soon, won't we? I'm enjoying it, though. I hope you are.